Hey, travelers, for another week, and we've got more beer. Thank goodness. <laughs> I got, got scared for a moment there. Yeah. I was like, what if? What if we ran out? Yeah. I think I honestly could not remember the last time I ran out of beer, like where I was in my house walking yeah. around being like, there's no beer in here. That has not happened in over a decade. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I always wonder, we've done, I think this is episode 76. <laughs> and uh, So many good beers in there. You know, you, you worry about having to do one beer over again? Yeah, I know. I don't think we have yet. No. We, there's been a few times we've had a few texts back and forth being like, eh? Yeah. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, that's not a fear of ours, though. We get no, enough- no. You, you walk into the grocery store and you go... <laughs> We fine. Haven't had that. Haven't had that. <laughs> it's actually getting to the point now where it's like I got to go back and revisit beers that I loved five years ago and be like, do I still love this beer or is this just like five years ago Troy being dumb? But, well, you know. I mean, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you try it and you're like, what? what? This I, is awesome. I remember I still like this. And then sometimes yeah. the opposite happens. I don't like it as much as I used to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I've been there. Also, setting helps too. I mean, there's a difference. Like, you have a beer and you're like on a vacation, you're at a brewery, you're like, this is amazing. And then, you know, your kid just got done peeing on the floor because you're potty training. And then you drink that same beer and you're like, man, it doesn't quite, quite have the magic to it right now. Or does it have more? Hmm. Personal preference. I can't, I can't relate. Comment down below. Yeah. Yeah. Preferably not about potty training. I really I mean, don't want to. My kids' feel... potty training, so I could I could use all the help I can get. As if the world just revolves around you, Troy. Yep. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's drink. Let's drink. Yeah, beer. yeah. So uh, you you bought a brand new beer from Surly, which doesn't happen a whole lot lately. That Surly comes out with new beers, especially something that's sparkly. But this one is both. It's well, new and sparkly. Well, certainly most of their new beers are popping off in their variety packs. It's kind of the, the test ground, which I think is a, a, a great test ground for beer. More breweries should experiment with that, I would say. I know it can be hard on packaging because you're trying to, you know. But there's there's workarounds. But it's a great way to just to take a beer out for a spin and see if people actually like it or not. Yeah. So this is uh, Liquid Stardust from Surly. It's an Indian pale ale, 7% alcohol. And uh, 7%? 7%. Wow. Now, what my experience with sparkling ales is, and I believe there's a brewery in California that if I was really good, we're trying to research more, but I didn't research this, that specializes in sparkling ales, which usually tells us that the beer has been made with us, some kind of wine or champagne yeast. Yep. I looked up this beer, and it was not made with, uh, it was made with kind of surly house yeast, but they're still going for that champagne vibe of a dry beer you know, bubbly, effervescent. You kind of can see it in the bubbles. That yeah, yeah, it's a little bubbly. It's a little tight, champagne-y bubbles in there. Uh, so, yeah, let's give her a whirl. Definitely very, smells very dry. Hop, very hoppy. Dry and hops, like yeah. dry hop smell on the on the nose. But I was going to combine the two words I was using. Um, But it's got that surly smell to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Surly beers have a very distinct hop smell they use a lot of the same base hops uh, i mean this one's amaretto mosaic yeah well that's a it's not like super sparkly no it's not what i would call you know kind of pack this beer a little bit yeah it's uh, both hoppy it's dry but it's not like a brett ipa because those are also going for that dry vibe I'd say it's more effervescent than that. Effervescent. It's got some good. It's definitely carbonated. Yeah, it's, it's certainly carbonated. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of kind of deceiving because the head dissipated very quickly. Yeah. But the the body packs a punch. I call this a pinhead, tiny head, big body. You know, as yeah. far as like the carbonation is concerned. Very interesting. I just came up with that. Huh. Yeah, that's a. Is it selling well? I mean, it's in the variety pack, so yeah. the variety packs are doing pretty well. But well, yeah, I, I would, would I would say this is more of a, a summer. Yeah, this would be a pretty refreshing beer on a summer day, especially yeah. if you're like, you know what? Actually, this beer would probably pair really well with because it, it uh, of the hops and the dryness. This would almost go good with like a really sweet dessert. 
Oh yeah. Kind of yeah. balance it out. Yeah. You know, go for. Yeah. Um, you know, that could that could almost be a, a fun combo, just something to kind of pull away from that sugar and the like the sweetness. But yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't I don't know if I would uh would say this is my favorite beer store was ever made, but definitely a fun beer to have in the variety pack. Yeah, you know, definitely a fun experiment. So not bad. <laughs> not something I would seek out on a regular. I mean, basis, also, Lane is but... an IPA drinker, so <laughs> him saying not bad to an IPA is a screaming endorsement from almost anyone else. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you also probably like it because it's not <clears throat> the most IPA beer. It's no, I mean it's IPA. got it's got a very hoppy nose to it, and it's you know it's got that. It's almost like drinking a beer seltzer water. Yeah, I'd say this is almost like a hopped seltzer water. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, camera, oh, oh, camera guy. Oh, oh. Ah, there we go. Alex is. Uh, all he right. woke up, everyone. He's been here this entire time, and he just woke up and adjusted the camera. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill this one. Move on to the next one, shall we? Yeah. Uh, the the next one, I don't know that... I don't think we've ever had it on the show. But we have a theme, damn it, and we're going to yeah. keep our theme going here. Well, that's right. There's plenty of bottle openers all around. We've got them all around, man. <sighs> I, was, I was panicking. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, uh, Lakefront, of course, we did an episode there. Uh, if, you, if you haven't watched it yet, you, you definitely should do that. And uh, I actually just rewatched it recently, and uh, it holds up. No, I, I want to go back there soon. I would say Lakefront was easily one of my favorite shoots we've ever done together. Yeah. When we've done a lot of shoots, if you haven't watched the episodes, we can prove that. Just go watch the episodes. But right. The Lakefront guys treated us extraordinarily nice. They're a fun brewery. They're an innovative brewery and yet traditional. So they have old school styles. They got new stuff. They got great food. They have a great location. It's like, what more do you need? It's it's a good day. Their tours are fun. And they got polka music. They got polka. And, and we all love polka music. Everybody. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing sadder. I remember I worked at Beer Festival. Oh, Oktoberfest one day. It was a yeah. Saturday. I did an Oktoberfest. Polka music played all day. Yeah. The next day I had to go do another Beer Fest. Sunday, it, would be, it was at a hipstery place. I'm like, yep. ah, not polka. You know, and they're like, ah, we'll get a polka band. I'm like, no. Yes. Yes. Two days straight of nothing <laughs> but polka. This guy, at the end of it, it's like, I hear one more tuba. Very, very short story about my history with polka. I used to work in TV. Short story. Lanyon loves it. Yeah. No. <laughs> used to work in TV. The little TV station that I worked at had a show called Bandwagon. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was one of the longest running locally produced TV shows it, it had been going since like the 50s or 60s. Did they have advertisements like, jump on the bandwagon? I don't remember. Uh, if they but did, anyway, I'm it was all it was all polka music. And so all of these old people would show up to the, the TV station <laughs> and they would dance while we shot bandwagon. Of course they did. So by the time the show was done, yeah. it smelled of light beer and brute in the studio. You you don't get that smell old, out very quickly. Old one perfume. Oh, and and maybe a little Aquanet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it Lawrence Welk? Can you get to pop some bubbles? Uh, well, Lawrence Welk is dead, I and he was it. dead then. But it was it was kind of like Lawrence Welk, where the you had two hosts and. You talk about the next song, and, and it just sounded like the previous song. <laughs> I remember I was listening. No, this is a beer barrel polka. What the hell is the difference between that and the one that we just listened to? There was the jazz station that used to be there with the NPR station. Yeah. And so you'd have to listen to jazz in between the actual news. And they'd be like, the big, the jazz guy would be like, oh, I wrote this song after my dad died. And they'd play the song. You're like, I, I mean, I guess. I don't know. He's like, I wrote this song after my child was born. And it sounded exactly the same. Yeah. Like, if I was your dad, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, wow, <laughs> you, you couldn't change anything? You couldn't put an extra instrument in there or something? Nope. Come on. Nope. Uh, anyway, this that's enough about Polka. Troy and Landon <laughs> review weird music. <laughs> 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 Troy actually knows something about music. I mean, I have no idea what you guys are talking about with the Polka person. Right. That makes you feel any better. No. I just want to right. re, re, reestablish my not giving a shit about music cred. Okay. Reestablished, yep. yeah. You got it. Yeah. Anyway, Lakefront, they, they make a pumpkin lager. <laughs> what a lager. beautiful place. <laughs> they make a pumpkin lager, and that's what we're drinking. I also like the guy that gave our tour was named Petty, Off- or Petty Officer Battle. Or Party Officer. Party Officer Battle. Party Officer Battle. Yeah. His last name was Battle. 
Please. What is he doing giving tours at a brewery? With the last name Battle? Yeah. Uh, that guy should, should be a be mascot for something. Or should be in the Army. Army mascot, next Captain America. Anyway, pumpkin lager. Oh. Well, for, those, th- for those that like pumpkin beers, first of all. Yeah. we're gonna. So the trend that we're continuing that I mentioned that earlier in the show is that yep. we, everyone's been shitting on pumpkin lagers, so we keep drinking them. Yeah. They yeah, just have nothing else to... Nothing else just to spite everybody. Stir that you pot up a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, just, and that, and I legitimately <clears throat> love pumpkin beers. You do too. Yeah. Yeah. So, that being said, let's start from the top to the bottom on this guy. Lakefront, they made a lager, which A, is fun because we are Wisconsin. They're a German-ish brewery making, them, making their pumpkin beer lager. is a cool move. It's different. No one else does it that I've had yet. Ooh. Good push. Tastes like pumpkin. Yep. Um... Uh, they make a lager out of it. They nail it. It's perfect. Perfect amount of spice. Sometimes pumpkin beers can go a little too much. Sometimes they can beat you over the head with the spice. I'd say this one's a good blend. A little coriander, white body. Mm-hmm. They also have a... It's like the opposite of a Warlock. Barrel, they also have a barrel-aged pumpkin. Sorry, I just got super I think excited. it's brandy barrel-aged, so... We don't have any of that tonight, and I was sipping on brandy. Yeah, we got so brandy I, here. I think I'm just going to put my brandy... <laughs> TRT in the, in the, secret secret bottle of brandy over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to put my brandy in there, and we'll see if that... Have you ever watched this show, and you're like, hmm, seems like they've been drinking brandy. Well, this episode, you're correct. We have been drinking brandy. You're correct. Yeah. Not any other episode. So what really. happens when, when Troy works for a distributor and just brings random crap yeah, over? Yeah, and he's like, hey, I've never tried this before. Yeah. And you learn the letter V is five. Uh, well, I knew it was five. Roman numerals, Troy. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't read the name well. <laughs> That's why I got you, Landon. Like, Landon, I need yeah. you to read these names I'm, for me. I'm here for you. <laughs> got to tell you, with the brandy in it, pretty good. <laughs> you know, it was good before. I would say that's that's kind of the fun part about this beer too. Because, you know, there is those folks out there. It's not a huge portion of the beer drinking community, but there is a portion that likes to blend beers and mix them and do beer cocktails. Yep. This one would probably make a solid beer cocktail because it, because of that lager and that lighter body that you get with the lager, you get a lighter beer. So it kind of gives you an opening, whereas opposed to if you have a, like a Warlock, you know, I think we've done that on here before, which <clears> is astounding to that so much heavier body that, it, you know, it's almost overpowering. Yeah. And I would encourage anybody that, is thinking about going to Milwaukee, oh. you know, s- certainly stop in a lakefront because uh, the stuff that you'll find in their tap room too, you can't even get it in a bottle or a can anywhere. I would argue right now, Milwaukee as a whole has a lot of great tap rooms. Yeah. I mean, they, they've, they've upped their game on tap rooms. I can't think of another city that I would say has as many consistently awesome tap rooms as Milwaukee does right now. Like Minneapolis is cool, cool too, but I mean, right now you got like Lakefront, you got Good City, you got uh, MKE, all of uh, Eagle Park. They're all doing great, fun tap rooms. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Well, and if you just go outside of Milwaukee, the Fermentorium, they're doing some awesome I know, stuff. I know too. it's not the coolest place, but the Sprecher tap room is also crazy but fun. Yeah. 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 It's like a it's like a madman's brewery, and there's something charming about that. At least for me, maybe it's because I'm crazy, and I'm like, ah, oh, I get you. I, I think everybody that goes there has a fun time. No, yeah, yeah, least. bit of a carnival last. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you never know. All right, so not, you 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 brought something that I don't think we've ever done on this show. Yeah, we've actually never done a nitro beer on this show. Seventy some episodes, three to four beers an episode. You do the math at home. I'm not a calculator. So, and and I I've had nitro beers out of a bottle before. Yeah, I think I've had. Uh, I'm I'm sure I've had some kind of nitro out of a can. So this is, but I've never had this. We're gonna roll a hard six on this one. Yeah, these aren't sixteen ounce glasses though. Which maybe they? maybe we can get Alex to get us a bigger glass. Fetch us a bigger glass, Alex. It's right right next to your head. Right, right. No, he's gonna he's gonna so, have to pour this. So, guys, nitro beers need to be poured in a different way than most beers. Do you have a bigger glass, Alex? A bear glass? Is that a 16-ounce glass or a 12? Uh, we'll call yeah. that a 16. I should be able to look at yeah. it and tell, but, you know. So, a hard pour is just that. It's a hard pour. Normally, you'd want to do the 45-degree angle. Right. You know. Yep. But this one, we're going to have to just hit it hard. Let's hit it hard, and hopefully you don't get anything on the table. Look at that. 
Beautiful. And then every you're not, you're not going to be able to see it on camera, but hold on, we'll get it out the, there. Uh, the CO two, the cascading of the CO two. Yes. <clears throat> I'm not going to. It, it didn't cascade that long. I'm not going to idea. Yeah, no. that was a perfect pour. Good job. Now, every good pour, you should always have a little bit of beer left in the can, whether or not it is a hard pour or not. So, yeah. And this is a cold brew nitro stout. So, yeah, this is from another Milwaukee brewery. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. I didn't even really think <clears> about <throat> that until like right this second. MK, they also have a cool tap room. They just built a new one. Yep. So, uh, let's give this guy a try, huh? Cold brew coffee from a. Oh, Wayne, the name is right there if you want to pronounce it. Anodyne. Anodyne coffee roasting, which doesn't mean probably anything to most of us. Might be a town or something. I mean, obviously, you get a ton of coffee on the nose. That's all, almost all I get. It's uh, it's sweet. Mm-hmm. It's got a it's got a lot of sweetness to it. This is very easily the most sweet coffee stout I've ever had. It said it's got stone fruit, so I'm wondering if that's where some of the sweetness is coming from. <laughs> Stone fruit is always hard to like. What is a stone fruit? Yeah, something that has a pit. <laughs> I would imagine. So does that mean Brad is a stone fruit? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate myself for making uh, that joke. Oh, why? Is it because you're a dad and that you have to make dad jokes? Uh, I'm gonna get free license now. Yeah. I can do it without a, without shame. No, there's still shame. <laughs> You there's, still have to live with yourself. There's, so the coffee flavor is obviously there. I it's would, there, but it's it's very closely followed by a, a heavy sweetness. I would say, I mean, once again, if you, if you watch a show uh, enough, you, you'll you'll often hear me waxing on about balance. Yep. And you can balance a beer more than just hops versus malt. There's tons of different ways to do this. I would say that coffee is definitely balanced out by a, a large portion of sweetness, kind of chocolatey esque sweetness. It's more of a dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, for sure. Almost yeah. like a, you know. So you simultaneously are getting like a dark chocolate bitterness, a coffee bitter. <clears throat> you're getting uh, sugary sweetness, kind of like that dark chocolate. Sweet. Yep. There's a lot going on in this glass. You almost get a, a dark cherry chocolate, cherry chocolate kind of. I don't think I get a whole lot of cherry, but I'm also not like. I think that's where the sweetness is coming from, but I could be wrong. Maybe a, maybe it's a different dried stone fruit. I mean, maybe and it's that, a plum. And if you have a complex enough beer, that there's a good chance that everyone's going to be able to get everything. Right. Yeah. yeah right. A, some people are more sensitive to one thing or another. You know. Well, I think now people know how to pour a nitro beer out of a can. Just go hard. It's just almost go, easier. go hard at it. Yeah. It's actually easier than pouring like a regular beer. Yeah. You just got to yeah. commit to the. You just got the little. There's no, no widget. There's, in there's it. no widget. Yeah. Huh. How about that? Anyway, <laughs> I don't know where to go from there. No, no widget. No widget. I guess we're done. <sighs> Shut Must it be. down. Shut it down. We're mixing beer with, with uh, brandy and no widgets. In this hand. episode has definitely gone off the rails. As opposed to our other ones? I would say more so. <laughs> we, I mean, this is going off the rails for me and you. Like, oh. we're, pr- we're pretty neutral guys. Like we don't. There's not like a great episode, but there's also not a terrible episode. We're kind right. Of, well, maybe this is the terrible one. <laughs> it brings down the average. Now we now we we set the l- really low bar. Now we can only get higher. Or maybe we need to mix more booze with beer. Maybe we'll try that next week. Maybe next week we'll do nothing but boiler makers. Make <laughs> nothing but boiler makers. Make sure you turn tune in for that next week. Or anyway, uh, if you haven't already done it, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Tell your friends and family about us too. And we'll see you next week. I can you go home and tell your grandpa. Hey, grandpa. Yeah, tell tell your grandpa who doesn't know what YouTube is. Or beer. I mean, <laughs> Budweiser. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Prost. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.